Hello everybody, Siftree again, and today I will be doing a tier list on the cards of Casey's mod. Now, first of all, before we begin, Happy New Year, I hope you had a great time, and um, yeah, let's, uh, let's see the cards that we used the previous year, and also maybe the following two. So, for the tier list itself, let's begin with that. We got the easy win, uh, <laughs> obviously we're gonna throw in here whatever's giving us an easy win, then we got useful here then we got usable i mean useful is just a card that is overall not gonna hamper you usable is a card that might hamper you might not depends on the deck and needs a specific deck is are going to be cards that will need a specific deck to function on like you know ants etc otherwise they are trash then we got the cards that are only good for the sigils otherwise they are trash and then we got the trash cards themselves now uh, last time I did this tier list, it was for the normal description, and last time I did the tier list, it was considering that you don't transfer sigils off, and the card themselves only rated without flames, etc. This time, because in cases mod, I'm gonna just take the whole experience into account. I mean, if you want to see the only the card rating you can see my previous tier list it has all the cards other than the um, cases mod card so this time i decided to you know have it as a with the gameplay included so for example if you would flame it if it would be good and if uh, you sacrifice things if it's good uh, that means that some cards will be in different positions but mostly most of the things are going to be the same uh, i don't have a category for flaming good for flaming because flaming is not really that powerful in cases mod as you can only flame twice so yeah let's begin adder trash instantly i, w I mean the explanation is going to be, I'm going to try to do like quick explanation. Poisonous is not really as powerful as people think. Poisonous is good against some specific things. It's good, okay, I don't disagree. Like against the moose bug, against the mole man. There are some a few things that's good at. But most, most of the time, you want to have poisonous and a card that has like one or two attack. Because if your card has like three, four, five, six attack, you don't need poisonous anymore. If anything, you want to have multi-strikes, etc. So overall, it's like... Uh, um, if if you have a weak card, then you can give it poisonous or it does something. But that means that you're trying to make a weak card useful. So it's like it's like a trap, you know. You feel like oh, it can insta kill something, but it's not really that important to insta kill something. Mostly you want just to have damage. So either poison, uh, it's trash. And also it's a two cost one one. I mean, what is it gonna do? It's gonna kill something and then it's gonna just do one damage to Leshy. And you have sacrificed two units to do that. I prefer to have even a wolf. Even the wolf that is a 3-2. With three damage, the wolf can kill almost anything. I mean, other than the Mulman, as I said, and Moosebuck. So, anyway, that, that's it with that. Alpha. Uh, good sigils. Uh, it is a good sigil, but the card itself, I mean, I think five cost is a bit too expensive. Obviously, if you're in a bone deck, it does something. But, um, I mean, you could say it needs a specific deck, but no. I think it just has a good sigil. And uh, it's not even that powerful. I mean, a bunch of people would place it here. But I myself would place it on has a good sigil, and um, yeah, maybe I'm gonna change things around later. Amalgam, um, it's uh, it's usable. It's usable. It's a two cost three three. It's like better than a wolf. Although as a rare, I would say it's trash. But I mean, it also gets all the sigils, all not the sigils, all the totem buffs, no matter what totem you have. And an inscription in cases mod, most of the time you will try to have a totem because it can be something good. So overall, it's usable. Amoeba, trash. Amoeba is trash because uh, this sigil here can be anything. And uh, if you see my sigil ra rating uh, tier list, you will see that half these sigils are trash. Uh, some of them are good, but even if it gets a good sigil like triple strike, it's still a uh, one, two. So, okay, it's. You could say it's usable. Yeah, it's, it's between trash and usable. I mean, I would say it's trash because of the fact that it's random. And it's a rare. I mean, will you pick this for a rare romance guy? <laughs> Uh, it's between here, okay? It's between here. Definitely not good sigil, so. Uh, this is definitely here. I mean, every single ant is going to be needs a specific deck, otherwise they are obviously trash. The bat, I would say usable. Although I'm between trash and usable, but a 4 cost for 2-1, well, with the same coin, you should also have this here. Yeah, I think those are here. They are usable, they're not complete trash, and it's not that only the sigils are good on them. Yeah, they are usable. Although not the best cards, neither useful nor easy. If you add them to your deck, it's not going to be the end of the world. That's what usable means. Uh, Beaver is trash. I mean, let's be honest here. It blocks you two lanes in, which you won't even want. And half the fights are flyers, so you will kill yourself with this. Beehive, definitely a good sigil. So I'm going to say it's usable. Because even if you don't sack the sigil on something else, it's a 1 cost 0 2 that sometimes gets hit for once and for one damage and gives you a B, which you can then play and have a double sack. But even if it insta dies, like if something does 5 damage to it and it dies, you still get a B. 
which you can sacrifice then, so you don't lose any tempo, right? So you play a squirrel, play the beehive, then the opponent kills the beehive, you get a bee, and then next turn you can draw a squirrel, play the bee, bay the squirrel, and then you have to sacrifice as if you didn't lose anything. So it's a good time buyer, because even, even the mole... Uh, when it dies, you lose tempo because at that point you lose a unit on the board that you cannot use for a sacrifice. While the beehive, even if it blocks uh, uh, infinite damage and dies, you still get the card out of it no matter what happens. Um, this thing I would say usable. It's between usable and trash. The only reason I'm saying usable here is because if you put it on the very left lane, it's a 4-3. So in case you don't know how this works, is it has as much damage as uh, the distance from the ding it has. Plus 4. Now what? No, the, the 4 minus the distance it has. So if it's at the very left, at the very first spot, it does 4 damage. Second spot, 3. Third spot, 2. And fourth spot, 1 damage. So as long as you have it at the first spot, it's like a 2 cost 4, 3, which is insane stat-wise. And uh, there isn't anything inherent negative uh, on being on the first spot, right? The, there is no downside on being on the very left. So you just play it on the very left and it's a 2 cost 4, 3. I mean, it's definitely better than a wolf or anything. It's just positionally based bad. And even in the second spot, it's like a 3 three so even then it's at least an amalgam it's a good card it's a usable card and uh, black goat is definitely good for the sigils it's it's definitely not a card that you would buff or anything it it does not um, i mean it's literally good for the sigil it has it, it isn't anything else otherwise you can also use it on the bone lord so it is a little bit better but once again it's good for the sigils so let's be honest here this is trash two cost two three uh I, I, when it's a two cost i always want it to not be defensive and be offensive this thing is defensive obviously tries to yolo itself in and die not a good choice in my opinion sometimes it might work out but i mean let's be honest here it's trash this is also trash it might block a flyer here and there that might be useful, uh, but um, no, I still believe it's trash. Uh, the Bullfrog's definitely not a good card. This is, I would say, usable. I mean, the moment you play it, if, if it's in your starting hand, it's a 1 cost 2 1, which overall in the game does not exist. There does not exist in this game a, a 1 cost 2 1. It's not a stat that's fairer. And um, yeah, the game also knows it, and this is obviously a 1 cost 2 1. And uh, if you draw it later, it might even be a 1 cost 5 1. You never know how much it can have. Sometimes it's a 0 1, sometimes it's a 1 1. Okay, okay. But once again, this thing, especially with sigils like flying or. Um there are some very good sigils that, like, multi-attack, multi-strike, anything that makes it easily survive and attack a bunch of times makes this a very good card really quickly. Uh, it could be unuseful, but the thing is that sometimes it backfires, so I'm gonna say usable because, yeah, as I said, sometimes it does backfire, sometimes it locks you in. For example, if you have it in your starting hand and try to play it right away, you might do damage, but if you try to play anything else, then it becomes a zero damage card right away. So, that's that. Cat. I mean, good sigils? No. <laughs> I don't think the sigil is good. It blocks your lane in, and uh, the cat itself is not really good because it literally blocks yourself in, and you cannot use it. I mean, you can use it for some tactics, like play a bunch of cards in a turn and whatnot, but in my opinion, this is not a good card. Uh, this is experience talking mostly, not fact. Like, you feel that it's good, right? Because it gives you infinite sacrifices, but through experience and play, the more you play, you will realize that this is not that a good of a sigil, especially because it's a 0-1. Now, uh, Child 13 is usable, though, because although it has the same thing, at least this thing's attack. That's the main problem with the cat. You block your lane in and you cannot do anything. At least this thing blocks your lane in, but sometimes attacks. In case you don't know how Child 13 works, when you try to sacrifice it, it evolves into a 2-1, and then when you try to sacrifice it again, it becomes a 0-1 again. The sigil always stays, and you can do that up to 13 times. After that, you pretty much burn the card and it dies, but still, um, if you sacrifice just one card, it's a 2-1 flyer, whatever you played with it uh, is mostly going to be like 4 damage turn 1 or maybe 3 damage turn 1, or you can even play a whole board and win right away. Um, now, the cat, by the way, has 9 lives, so if you try to sacrifice 9 times, it becomes like a super cat, but... You're not gonna do it. You have to have an infinite or something. Cockroach, definitely only good for the sigils. I mean, a 4 cost 1-1 one, one is pretty much trash. But uh, the sigil itself is good. So, yeah, that's it pretty much. Let's. Uh, this is also only good for the sigils. It's uh, just a 5 cost 1-2. I mean, it's also usable. Let's let's go with usable. Because it, it joins from your hand, like, for free, right? So, it's definitely a usable card. But you don't really want to keep it, right? Because if it's in your opening hand, you have to somehow manipulate the board so you lose something. So, it joins for free. Ah, uh, but on the other hand, sometimes you don't need to manipulate anything, just trench for free and you get a free unit on the board that you can sacrifice later. So overall, it has its uses. It's usable. Maybe it should be has its uses here. That's the same thing. Um, yeah, Coyote, still usable. It's a 4 cost 2 one. I mean, it's just 
fairly stat and that's it pretty much it's not complete trash because you might play a unit quote unquote for free as you might not have any other bones outlets cuckoo easy win let's be honest spawns if uh, uh, an egg on the opponent field you can any sigil you give this thing it becomes insane instantly this sigil insane this sigil no, this sigil no that's not sigil i mean i don't have any good sigils here this sigil insane and any any good sigil on the cuckoo is an insta win any flame on the cuckoo is an insta win anything on the cuckoo is an insta win plays a plays an egg even if the opponent gets a raven out of the egg like if you have the cuckoo buffed at all you don't even care that he got a raven sometimes the raven is even better for, for from whatever is coming in sometimes the opponent plays an alpha that um, might be buffing a bunch of things and you might have a problem you play the cuckoo you give him just a two attacking bird who cares so yeah cuckoo is an easy win it's an insane card by the way some cards are better for leshy than us just so you guys know for example alpha is a lot better on leshy than us okay sometimes it's really powerful on us but most of the time you know some the, the balance is not the same for all cards right so don't um, tell me like, but Sift, you said if you bring Alpha and it's an easy win. Yeah, for Lashi, for us it's a loss. Uh, Dios is an easy trash. What this does is uh, creates two bells and then when you when the Lashi kills one of the two bells, this attacks it. But the thing is that this sigil cannot get transferred off. If they buffed it or patched it, I wouldn't know, but this is not a good card. Like a two cost, two, two. May barely started and then the belts you cannot even sacrifice them so you block yourself in you have to plan ahead and make the opponent hit the bell so you kill him but even if the opponent hits the bells and you kill him that does not mean that you did damage right that does not mean that the spawn that has a bell in it will then also kill something you then have to still play cards and still fill your board so it doesn't really achieve that much uh darwolf uh this darwolf itself is good for the sigil it's it's not really a playable card because it costs three, it's insanely statted. So it, it is really, really good for the sigil. Like this sigil is insane, but otherwise the card itself, three costs, three costs have to be, I mean, you could say usable, but I'm going to say it's just good for the sigil. Uh, Dar Wolf Pup, uh, I would say it's useful because it's a two cost that evolves into this monstrosity, into a two five that attacks twice. If you flame this once, it's insane. It's it's like you flame it once on attack, it's an insta win. If you flame it once or twice on defense, it will almost be immortal because it's going to be a two nine. So this is a very good card. It's not an easy win because it's a two cost. So it has some, you, you have to be able to play it, but otherwise it's like very powerful. Uh, Elk Fawn, we're gonna go with Trash. Actually, it's usable, definitely better than other Trash things. But to be honest, this is trash. Like, I never pick it if possible because it moves around. Uh, that's the main problem. Moving around is not always good, especially when you're playing in challenge mode that you have to calculate every single thing. And you cannot predict when Leshy's going to play something that uh, will join a random lane and then you're going to lose because this thing makes whatever it wants. Elk, alongside that, goes to the trash. This is good for the sigils. Field Mass is a really bad card on its own. It's like a 2 cost 2-2 two, two that fecundity is useless, but the sigil is insane. The fecundity sigil is insane, making you, uh, whenever you play a card, you get a copy of it in your hand. It's like awesome. Needs a deck because it's an ant. I mean, I don't really need to explain the ants. A gek, uh, by the way, I, I will just explain for half a second for the ants. Anybody that doesn't know, ants have as many damage as many ants you have on the field. So as long as you don't have an ant deck, they always have one attack each. So that's why they're here. Gek is definitely useful, not an easy win, obviously. It's a zero cost 1-1. One, one. The good thing with a Gek is that you can transfer sigils on it and then and that you can also uh, sacrifice it really easily. For example, if it's in your starting hand, you start with two sacrifices, you know, the, the mandatory squirrel hand, plus the Gek is instant two sacrifice on your opening hand. So Gek is useful overall, and you can buff it also very easily. I mean, you give it sigils, you know. Uh, Great White. I would say it's needs a specific deck you have to be able to play uh, well, with the same coin by the way darwolf also goes in the specific deck but i just have it here to differentiate like this could be here right uh, let's have it like this so it makes more sense because these are definitely worse <laughs> than uh, good sigils so yeah the colors whatever anyway um as i said great white definitely goes need a specific deck the deck being i have high cost cards that i play otherwise it's like useless you three cost is too much on this game to play uh, if you don't have a deck that can handle three costs because most of the time you will be killing off your own stuff and we're talking about um cases mod here which is a challenge mode so great white not, most of the time not a good choice obviously if you have like something like a corpse maggots with you or something else that is really powering up the great white well then you are in the category of specific deck Grizzly also joins the same thing, specific deck, otherwise it's a 3 cost, I mean the card is nice and all, but it's not really playable otherwise. Tiraqua, 
E E.G. Rakwa. E.G. Rakwa, I think, also needs a specific deck. Uh, although it is actually better than these, right? It should be somewhere around here, like useful, I would say. But to be real, this needs a specific deck, okay? You have to realize that it's supposed to be here on useful. It could be here, an easy win, but it's either here or here or even here or even here, depending on your deck, right? What this thing does, what this card does, is it transforms randomly into another card in your deck. Okay, and when you play the card that is in your deck th with the normal cost that the card entails, then it actually transforms into a 4 1. So if your deck is, for example, a bunch of 1 costs, then it's like here. Because you play 1 cost and boom, you get a 4 1 repulsive. Repulsive means that nothing can attack it. Not side attacks, Mattis God cannot attack it, nothing can attack it. Flyers fly over it and hit you normally, but nothing can actually damage this thing um, straight up. So, for example, Great White does not attack it and then goes underwater and you do 4 damage to the opponent for free. So this is a very powerful card. But if you have 1 cost, if your deck has 0 cost, then it's even higher. If your card has a bunch of 2 costs, though, then it's about here. Because, I mean, it depends on the 2 cost. If it's gonna... If you're gonna sacrifice 2 units and you, and you were about to get, I don't know... I don't know what you were about to get. I, I can't really give an example here. If Amalgam, it's pretty much the same. It's a 4-1. Yeah. Well, it's, it's here if you have two costs in your deck. If you have three costs in your deck, then it's here. Because you will sacrifice three units and get a 4-1 out of it. I mean, might as well get a Grizzly. It's the same thing, almost. So, overall, I would say it uh, needs a specific deck. You know what? Let's put it on useful. Just because it's not an easy win. It, it might actually kill you off. Because you might try to calculate something and it might screw you over. I think it's still in the specific deck. I'm sorry I'm bouncing this around. But the thing is, like, even if you have one cost... Example, for example, let me give you another example. By the way, I'm sticking to these cards a bit more because, um, you know, they're a bit more unique and also from the case mod. Let's, let's for example, say you have a Cuckoo. I, I want to really put my, like, drive my point home. Let's say you have a Cuckoo and you play it. It, it, they will actually spawn the egg. We have, I have experiment about this. I know that it's a fact. So the, the, the this card does actually anything that has to do with what joins the void. For example, if you play a cuckoo or if you play a magpie, it will draw you the card. It will place the egg. So let's uh, say, for example, you play the cuckoo and it plays the egg, places the egg, and then this transforms into a G rock because this thing actually was the cuckoo. Okay. Now this thing has in front of it an egg, and it's going to attack the egg, especially if the cuckoo was like a three one. And then this joins in the poor one, and you might be, okay, I play the Cuckoo, I do 3 damage in the air, and we win. And then, actually, what happens is you play the Cuckoo, the Cuckoo plays an egg, the Iraq appears, it attacks, the EG Iraq appears, it attacks the egg, and you don't do 3 damage. And then, like, Leshy attacks, and you lose your board, or you lose the game, or you have no idea what might happen, right? So, if you have cards that have uh, specific sigils that actually need to stay on the board, for example, Cuckoo, or for example, Direwolf, Double Strikes, there are a bunch of cards that have sigils that you would like to stay on board, then this card is not good. So we're going to go with needs a specific deck. That's my uh, that's my decision. Uh, Kingfisher is trash. Uh, you might say good sigils. It doesn't have good sigils. Once in a while, once in a while, you might need an underwater flyer, but otherwise it's like trash on its own. It's not worth it to sacrifice a bunch of things on it. I still believe it's trash. It's it's It tries to do one damage to Leshy and then lets Leshy through, right? That's what it does. Flyer means I do one damage to Leshy. Underwater means Leshy does whatever he wants to us. But at least we don't lose the Kingfisher. Well, if Leshy comes in with a Grizzly or whatever, or with a Great Wyke, we'll toast. <laughs> if Leshy comes in with um, a 3-3 or something, we'll be toast. The Kingfisher is not a good card. It, it It's not where it's started and um, the Sigils themselves are mostly a trap. You should uh, target to get more sigils that do damage or that do something specific, like keep your cards alive or maybe um, multi-attack or give you free cast. You you do not need sigils that just give you flying. Like, uh, at least I can attack the opponent whenever I want. No, that's not really that important in this game, in my opinion. Amor Geiger uh, goes to needs a specific deck. I mean, this is literally needs a specific deck. It needs a bone deck plus a blood deck or an infinite deck or whatever. This is a win more card. If you are already winning and you have infinite sacrifice and infinite bones and infinite blood and whatnot, then Lamor Geiger is insane. It's going to literally win you the game on the spot. As if you wouldn't already. But if you don't have infinite of anything, then Lamor Geiger is not really that good. Lamor Geiger, Lamor Geiger, I don't even know what the name is. Doesn't really matter. Long Elk is uh, trash. It's a four con. No, it's not trash. I mean, if we're going to have Coyote up here, I mean, might as well put it here, right? It's a, it's a four cost one, two. <laughs> I still believe it's trash. I mean, it does kill something. But then it moves to the right and then most likely dies. Because it will kill whatever's in front of it. But then when it moves, you have to calculate a bunch of things. And nah, I think Long Elk is trash. Like, alongside the, the adder and everything else here. I mean, 
I definitely prefer 2-1, that at least two, does 2 damage, and if I put the Sigil on it, it can do more things than having a 4-1-2 that moves around. This and Moving around itself is like a downside, so even if you put like Sigils on it with Multi-Strike and whatnot, it might kill everything with Poisons, etc, etc, but still it will start moving around, and if, if you try to, you know, if you are about to say, yeah, but you can pull Multi-Strike on it and whatnot, yeah, the same goes with Coyote, the same goes with everything that has a lot of damage. If you put Multi-Strike on it, it can clear a bunch of lanes, it can even win you the game. This thing does not even win you the game on its own. Uh, Magpie is usable. It's usable because no matter what happens, you can always choose to for two sacrifices to draw whatever card you want. By the way, I would say useful, to be honest, not even usable. Because as I said, if your deck is like huge, you just add a magpie to it. And uh, that means whenever you draw the magpie, you can draw whatever you want. Even if it's two sacrifices, the effect of drawing whatever you want from your deck is so good. Because you can build up like a one cost insane card that insta wins you the game. And then you have a magpie to draw it out of the deck. And the magpie is never, ever not usable because no matter what happens... It is a two-cost draw whatever card you want. So no matter how you look at it, it's a two-cost draw whatever card you want, as I said for the fifth time now. And um, if you have a one cost that's insane, like the Cuckoo, you can just sacrifice the Magpie on the spot, play the one cost that's insane, and just win on the spot right there and the then and there. So Magpie is really useful. Not an easy win, but useful. Uh, Mantis God is an easy win, obviously. You can transfer it to whatever you want, and when you can give buffs to it, an easy win. It's, it's a, an extremely powerful card, what are we even talking about? Mantis is useful because it's a double strike. It's not an easy win, but it's a double strike, so it's pretty useful. I don't really need to explain things like that. Mealworm, I would say, is also useful. Now, it's the Sigil that's useful, and it's also itself is useful. Like, a two cost for zero... For, it's pretty much a free card. Two cost is not really that hard to play. And uh, because you have to sacrifice it, it's pretty much a one cost, theoretically. So this is a useful card. The Sigil is also really powerful if you transfer it to something else. If you don't know what the Sigil does, it does that. If you sacrifice this card, it transfers its stats to the next unit that uh, you sacrifice it for. So if you sacrifice, for example, the Mealworm for the Mantis, the Mantis is going to be 1-3. Um, that means you could flame the Mealworm, which uh, I would not really suggest, although you can flame it on defense which is a good choice, but that also means that you can transfer the Sigil on something else, like for example a Gek, or for example something big, like a Grizzly, and then if you sacrifice the Grizzly onto something else onto the Grizzly, then you can transfer the stats pretty much. Or you can, for example, give it to this 4-3, the middle one this 4-3. There are a bunch of cards that you can transfer this Sigil on, and then you can use it on something. It, it's useful, and it also combos well with Fecundity. Let's go with uh, Mirroring. Mirroring, I would say, is trash. Uh, this card, I mean... What's the point of it? it the, the idea is that it has three life for one cost, so if something comes in, it will most likely not kill it, and then this thing will copy the stats and kill it. It kills some very specific things, like, um, I don't know, the flyer? Where, where's the flyer? I don't even know, remember what the flyer's name. Like this thing here, the vulture, it kills the vulture in one shot, but the thing is that if nothing is in front of it, it cannot damage Leshy, so it's a full-on defensive card that tries to kill things, and some things don't even die from it. For example, Potupine doesn't die for it, um, there are some things that don't die from it, right? So, overall, I would not say it's really a good card. And the worst part is you cannot win with it. That's the main problem there, that if you clear the board, you, it does zero damage to Leshy, so it's pretty useless. Mole Man, it's usable. It's usable. I wouldn't say it's useful, but I would... Um, I would say it's useful. Um, I don't know. I would say it's useful. I would say it's useful. Change of plans. I mean, it gives you it gives you six damage blocking, flyer or not. Doesn't care. Will block everything in. If you flame it like once or twice in health, it's insane. If you give it a buff that makes it immortal with some kind of way, it's still insane. You literally cannot lose the game at some point. If you just have like an eight... If you have an eight life mole man, that is, for example... Immortal, like, for example, it has the Cockroach Sigil, you're almost, almost, you ca cannot lose pretty much, because 8 life per round is really a lot, and if you flame it even more, if you give it, like, damage, it's also very nice. Overall, this is, like, a good unit. It's not extremely powerful, it's not an easy win, but it is a useful unit to have around, and 6 life is not a little, by the way. And also, you can do a trick with it that a lot of people might not think about. You can play the Mole Man, block 1 or 2 th hits, for example, take 4 damage on the Mole Man, and then the next round, sacrifice it for something better and start doing damage. So you can use it as a buffer to just draw a card out of your deck for a turn, you know. Mole. Well, the Mole is not really that good. I'm gonna say it's trash. I mean, the same thing applies like the Mole Man, but the thing is, first of all, it doesn't block flyers, while flyers will most likely kill you against Leshy. And uh, secondly, it, it only has 4 health, so there is a good chance that it will actually get one shot, and then you will not be able to sacrifice for something else. So I would say it's trash. You could say it's maybe usable, maybe usable. I mean, in comparison to the rest, it is actually usable. But the thing is, 
I don't know. I, I don't really like them all. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. I I'm gonna say it's trash. Um, you, you can disagree on this. It's it's not really a card that anybody really cares about, in my opinion. Uh, Moosebug is definitely trash. <laughs> Although I'm gonna say needs a specific deck, just because of the fact that, I mean, it's a 3 cost that doesn't really die that easily. Moving around is really bad, but pushing your cards is not really always good. You never know what might happen. You might say, yeah, Sif, but I know how to use the card, and I know how to use things around, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's still random, man. If Leshy decides to play something in the back line, and you want to say, like, okay, I have to do this and this and this to survive... Well, if your Moosebug is in the wrong position at that point, you're toast. And then Moosebug might, might be in a good position, might actually do the blocks you want them to do, but that's really random. You you cannot play Moosebug turn 1 and tell me that turn 5 you know how you're going to use it. It's, it's completely random. So I would say it's trash. Okay, I, I would prefer Glizzly and a Great White every time of the day over a Moosebug. So Moosebug, you stay there. Uh, Mud Turtle, I would say it's trash. I mean, it's a 2 cost 2-2 two -two that doesn't really die in one shot, but that's it. It's a 2 cost 2-2. Two -two. If it was, let's say it was a 2 cost 2 4, would it be useful then? If it was an elk without the moving around, would it be useful like a 2 cost 2 4 without the sigil? I think it is not. I mean, the upside with having this is that it can block a 5 damage hit or a, or a 4 damage hit or, or poisonous. That's it pretty much. Because otherwise, it is literally an elk with a, with a, with a, like, it's an elk without moving around. If, if, if Leshy attacks it for 1 damage, for 2 damage, then it dies in 2 turns like an elk. If, if Leshy attacks it with 1 damage, then it dies in 3 turns, while the elk would die in 4 turns. If Leshy attacks it with 3 damage, it dies in 2 turns, like the elk. And if Leshy does 4 damage, then it still dies in 2 turns, while the elk would die faster. And if it hits, gets hit for, with poisonous, it still survives. I mean, um, maybe? Nah, it's trash, man. It's trash. And uh, I don't know, the sigil is defensive. But it's not useful per se, it just keeps your unit alive. I mean, it's literally worse than this thing. Not literally worse, because at least your unit stays alive, but then you will lose it at the next round. Um, I don't know, it's it's like a really bad card. The only thing that this has, by the way, because I know it for a fact, is if Leshy tries to ding it with the Prospector Hammer thing that one-shots units, this will actually survive if it has the shield. With that alone, you might say it's usable, but I would say no, because that fight isn't even that hard. So just being able to survive a ding hit from the Prospector does not really mean anything. Blossom, I would say it's usable, because it's a 2 cost 1-1. One, one, so it's like you can sacrifice it. it. It's a unit that you can easily play for free. It's not useful, it's not easy win, but it is usable. You, you can have it in your deck, and it is going to do something. Uh, maybe I should change this to let's make this not complete trash i think that makes more sense right so they differentiate a bit and it's also more thematically bound to what we actually do in this channel right <laughs> which is uh call half the half of everything trash and the rest only five cards exist that are good that's how you win the game by the way by playing good cards imagine that Mm, Ouroboros obviously is uh, an easy win, <laughs> let's be honest here, I mean it needs a set, it's ne it, le it needs a little bit of setup, right? But you can say the same, the same thing for Cuckoo and Mantis, obviously, you can say that Cuckoo needs a little bit of setup, it's not a, a setup, it's not an insta win, you have to flame it a bit, you have to use a sigil or something. Ouroboros is the same thing, you don't have to flame it, you don't have to use a sigil, you don't have to use anything, the only thing you have to do is sacrifice it like 5 or 6 times, make it into a 5-5, five, five, a 6-6, six, six, a 7-7, seven, seven. and if it's like a 9-9, nine, nine, it's like an insta win, if it's a 69-69, it's a meme win, then it's nice too, but overall, overall, Ouroboros is insane. Obviously, it does not have its own tier like the last tier list we have, because now the stats reset after each run, so it always starts as a 1-1, which is not really good, a 2 cost 1-1 is not really good, but the moment you bring it up to a 3-3, it will come into the power of Amalgam, which is not complete trash, and if it's a 4-4 four, four or a 5-5, I mean a 2 cost 4-4, four, four, a 2 cost 5-5, five, five, are you insane? That's like very powerful. And um, yeah, let's continue. Pack Rat. Tirash, we know, uh, you know I hate it. Uh, maybe good sigils. I hate it. I hate the trash. It's trash, man. I It's trash. And there are so many better sigils. I mean, would you compare getting an item with double attack, fecundity, immortality, or maybe, maybe this? Yeah, you, you could compare it with black code. Okay, it, it stays in good sigils, but good sigils is otherwise trash uh, territory anyway, so... It is good sigils. I, I will say that. What it does, it, it gives you, like, a, an item at random, so... The good thing is not that it gives you the item, per se. The good thing is that before you play it, you use an item of your choice. That's the main... That's how I think about the card all the time, right? So you shouldn't say, like, oh, it could give you a clock or it could give you a squirrel. No, I, I, how I'm, I'm thinking it is 
before you play the pack rat, you play, for example, a squirrel. So it's as if it's a pack rat plus a squirrel, or it's a pack rat plus a um, plus a rock, or it's a pack rat plus the fun, or the pliers, or whatever. You use your worst item that you have, and you play the pack rat. So it's as if you you use an item for free, quote unquote. And then you get a random item that you should think about how to use on the following fight, because you should be winning. If you use an item, you should be winning most of the time anyway. Pelt lice. Trash! Pelt Lice is needs a specific deck, although it's pretty bad, like, I would say. I mean, obviously, it's trash, right? Anything, anything it needs a specific deck is trash if it's not in its own deck. I, I mean, that's really obvious. So what the Pelt Lice does is, if you have um, a Pelt in your deck, and you play the Pelt, then it joins the fight. And that's it, pretty much. It's a 1-1, one, one, and that's it. It's it's a 4-cost, so if it's in your hand, you cannot play it. it. It joins your deck, by the way. It joins from the deck or the hand. So if you have, for example, 3 Pelt Lice in your deck, or 1 in your hand and 2 in your deck, and then you play a Pelt, then all of them join right away. Boom, instantly on the board, and uh, they just fill the board. But it's 1-1. One, one. You can flame it, obviously. You can give it sigils. You can make it powerful. But the reason it's in a need-specific deck is because if you do not have Pelts in your deck, then it does nothing. Right? It has no ability. It's a 4 cost 1-1. One, one. And even if you have pelts in your deck, if you don't draw the pelts and draw the pelt lice, then it does nothing. It's a 4 cost 1-1. One, one. So you cannot really play it on its own. You have to play a pelt. And the thing is, that's pretty much the only thing you can do with that. For example, let's think about this. I have a deck which has 3 pelt lice and 5 pelts. And um, I don't know, whatever else. Like uh, 3 cuckoos and a mantis god. Right? I mean, it's Sift we're talking about. So you draw your hand, and it, ha it has two Pelt Lice and one Pelt. You play the Pelt, the Pelt Lice join. And then you're like, okay, I got three Pelt Lice on the board, I'm doing three damage per turn, maybe we can survive this for a few turns until I draw, you know, a better card, because three, three damage a turn is not a lot. So let's... And then you draw a card from the deck, and guess what? It's a Pelt. And then you draw another card from the deck, and it's another Pelt. Well, you just died. So the bad thing with this card is that it forces you to create a deck that you don't really want to create, you, you need to create a deck like, that has like two or three pelts because you don't want to draw too many pelts. But the thing is that if you only have two or three pelts, there is a good chance that you're going to draw the pelt lice before the pelts. And the pelt lice itself is not playable, so it's screwing your deck up so much. That's why I'm thinking about it being trash instead of being needs a specific deck. But let's just say it needs a specific deck, okay? Let's just say that it needs. And the deck, by the way, is... Like two or three pelts, or and five pelt lice or something. <laughs> you have to have a bunch of these to be able to do something out of it. Because you have to realize that every pelt it becomes more powerful with as, as many pelt lice you have. Because if you have only one pelt lice, it's complete trash. Like, imagine having pelts in your deck just to be able to get a 1-1 one -one out of your deck. Like, it's so bad. I can't even explain. It's, it's as if you have a pelt in your deck just because you have a geck in your deck. Why would you do that? Why would you have a pelt in your deck just to draw the geck out of your deck? Right? It's, you know what, let me give you an even better example. Is It is as if your pe pelt has the magpie sigil, and when you play it, for some reason you decide to draw the geck and play it. Why would you do that? Why would you ever use the magpie sigil on a, a geck? That's the same thing. You use a magpie sigil to draw a pelt lice out of your deck and play it on your board. But the thing is that if it is in your hand normally, you cannot play it. It's it's so bad. Like it's I, I cannot even explain how bad this is. Like, I I think I have given already too many examples here, and we are how much? Thirty three minutes. We're we're blasting through this, by the way. Like the last uh, tier list was an hour plus. This is already thirty three minutes. Uh, Porcupine, tra No, Porcupine is actually not complete trash. The reason is because it's a one cost one two, which is, I mean, it's okay. It's not complete trash, but it's okay. I mean, look at the, the cards that we we consider useful and easy win. It's a 1-1. One, one. 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 Everything is a 1-1 one, one up here. So this is a 1-2 that has a decent sigil. It's not complete. This, this sigil is not complete trash. It, it Sometimes it can block some things. It can do some damage. I mean, it's like a baseline unit that does something and is not complete trash. And by the way, I prefer it over the Bullfrog because the thing with Flyers, at least how I play, is... I let the flyers go through while I kill them so that I can control the board, right? Sometimes some fights are really hard for me. It's the hardest fight for me, the way I play it, is the... Um, where is the card again? I forgot the name. The the, the Turkey Vulture fight. There is like a fight with the Turkey Vulture plus a Mole Man. Plus a Mole, I think. But that fight is hard because the Mole is blocking in damage, right? The trick with the flyers is to let them damage you while you kill them. So you control the board and win the fight through time. 
There, that's why Bullfrog is bad, because it suicides into flyers. Like, I don't want to die from flyers. I want the flyers to attack me, and I want to kill the flyers on my own, so I get free lanes to attack for free later. So that's why Bullfrog is good and Pudgepine is good, um, too. Uh, Bullfrog is bad and Pudgepine is good. Because Pudgepine can kill a bunch of things in retaliation. You can play Pudgepine turn 1, it attacks for 1 damage, and then when uh, the Elk Fawn comes in, it kills it. When the, when the Wolf Pop comes in, it kills it. Whatever has 1 damage... Actually, who cares about damage? Whatever has one life can come in the Pochipine and die from the Pochipine retaliation damage. So that's really good. And the Sigil is also good. Like, if you transfer it on the Mole Man, you got a good card. If you transfer it on the Mole Man, you got a good card. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's okay. It's, it's not complete trash. That's the important part here. Uh, let's continue. Procorn. I would say trash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe good sigils. Maybe good sigils. I don't know, man. It's like a two cost one three moves around. The moves around part is that 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 I hate. I'm I'm gonna say trash. No, I'm 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 not gonna pander to anybody. I believe Erkvon is trash because it moves around, man. I hate this thing, and it's a two cost one three, which is three life is okay, but it's not uh, one damage is really bad for a two cost, and it attacks sideways, which is good obviously. But the thing is that because it moves around, it can go into a corner and do one damage. And imagine doing one damage with your two cost. Right? Imagine having a 2 cost 3-3 three, three against a 2 cost 1-3 that moves around. This this is like... You might see the double strike and say, oh, but double strike is insane if you transfer it on something else. Yeah, but when you're moving around, it's not really that powerful. Because you can go into a corner, you can lose your unit. The, the trick with the double strike is that you can try to hide it behind the flyer or hide it behind the rock, and then you can attack for free every single turn while obviously letting the flyer attack you, but you still attack for free every turn. While moving around, while having double strike is extremely bad. <laughs> so I'm gonna say trash. Raccoon. Where it belongs. Trash. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's say good sigils. Or oh, trash. I, I did not experiment with Raccoon enough. I, I played with it a bit. Okay, this is the one card which I can accept criticism like, yeah, you have not used the card enough so you don't know how powerful it is. This is the one card that I can agree th that with. Uh, the reason I have not used it a lot is because I realized it was trash pretty early. Uh, what this does is um, any card that you kill from Leshy gives you a bone. That's it, pretty much. You get bones from whatever you kill. But the thing is, it's a 3-cost 1-1. One, one. So it's as if it's an opossum that's not complete trash. You know what? Let's put it on not complete trash. Y you pretty much pay 1 bone for the ability to steal bones from the opponents. And, um, I mean, the moment you kill a single enemy, you get the bone back. So theoretically, it's as if it costed the same with opossum. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Let, let's be fair here. Let's be fair. Like, from, from balance perspective alone, I think it should be here. And let's actually have them next to each other. Opossum and Raccoon. I think that's fair. The sigil itself is not important. You don't really need bone farming. What you actually want to do in this game is either get an infinite to get bones or get the bone sigil on something like the the, the thing that's coming up next or, um, or have bones in an item. So overall, you do not get bones from this, okay? You get bones... In other ways, either with an infinite or with whatever other way. If if you need this to get bones, like if you're like, oh no, I need bones right now because I have a bone deck. Let's get the raccoon to achieve that. No, you're toast, man. I mean, no, you literally cannot do that. Obviously, it is going to give you bones, but if you try to build a deck around the raccoon and killing things to get bones. Ah. Power to you. Rat King. Good sigils, otherwise trash. Like, 2 cost 2 1 is complete trash on its own, but uh, it has a good sigil. You can use the sigil. Let's have these next to each other. Let's have this first, first of all. And let's have the second. And let's have this last. Yeah, that makes sense more. And this is, in my opinion, better. So, yeah. The Rat King, it has a good sigil. If you were a bone deck, you need it. Transfer it to something and get bones. That's it, pretty much. Rattler, I would say not complete trash. It's a 6 cost, which is not really easy to play, but it's a 3 1. So, three, 3 damage is really good. And if you have the Bone Lord buff, it's like an instant 3 1 unit for free, pretty much. So, it is actually not complete trash. I could put it on useful, but the thing is that if you're not a Bone deck, 6 bones are achievable, but most of the time, it's not really hard to achieve 6 bones, okay? But the thing is that most of the time, the moment you get 6 bones, you should be at the third round, maybe fourth round, right? So, you are either winning the game already or you are losing 
or you're losing, right? Um, I mean, that's the only thing that can happen. At, at the third to fourth turn, you should know if you're winning or losing, right? First turn, maybe not. Second turn, maybe not. But the third and fourth turn, unless she has played like a bunch of cards, you have played a bunch of cards, you should have a, a handle of what's happening. And uh, the Rattler, if you're winning, you don't care about it. If you're losing, then uh, then it's good. I mean, it's decent when you're losing because it's a 3-1 that can maybe kill a lane. But the thing is that if Leshy has double lanes, there is a good chance that it might kill something and then something is going to come in and kill it. So it has its downside. That's why it's not useful. That's why it is not complete trash. Raven Egg. I would say useful, actually. I would say Raven Egg is useful. We will slowly start filling up useful. Useful is not really the most uh, important uh, tier list here. And the most, uh, I mean, easy win is hard to get in. Useful is not hard to get in. So Raven Egg. I mean, it's a one cost 2-3 flyer, let's be honest. It has the downside of first turn doing nothing, but a lot of times that downside is not really going to matter. Sometimes it will matter, to be honest. Sometimes you will lose because you're not fast enough. But, um, I mean, otherwise, most of the time it is actually a useful card. Like a one cost 2-3 flyer, you can you can block in flyers, you can block in mole mans and do free damage. Uh, not mole mans, moles. You can attack over moles for free, you can attack over rocks for free, you can attack over enemy flyers for free. Two attack flyer is decent. Raven. Not complete trash. I mean, the same reason for the Raven Egg, but it's not the one cost, pretty much. But you get the damage out earlier, so... Theoretically speaking, like, let's be honest here. Theoretically, theoretically, you f you could do first turn pass, second turn, draw a squirrel, play the Raven, right? Uh, well, the difference, uh, damage-wise, is the same. The difference is that the Raven would be played on the first turn. At second turn, you could play the, you could still draw the scroll and then use it for something else. That's that's why this is useful and this is not complete trash, right? Because the card itself is not really that bad. Uh, but uh, I, I would say it might be trash, but it's not complete trash because, as I said, a two attacker is decent. A two cost. I don't know. I'm I'm really like between these, but um, yeah. I, I would say, let's say it's not complete trash, okay? Although, although I, I'm, I'm like between these two. Red heart, complete trash. Uh, <laughs> this is complete trash. This, this is a very bad card. I, I don't know. For some reason, people, uh, th there is like a community or something. There were memes about the red heart. I am not using the card and whatnot. And I think people think that this is a good card. This, first of all, this is a win more card, right? Let's, let's first say what this does. What this card does is, it has as much damage, as many sacrifices you did in the turn. But the thing is that this number changes every turn. So when you when your turn starts and this is on the board, first of all, let's uh, let's go with the normal scenario, right? The normal scenario is you start your game, you play this thing, the red heart. It's either a two two because it has it's a two sacrifice unit. I don't know if it's visible. So this thing is a two sacrifice unit and has as much damage as the cards you sacrifice. So the the moment you play it. It should be a 2-2, because you have sacrificed two units to play it. It might be a 3-2, because you might have sacrificed something else to play something else alongside it. It might be 4-2, maybe you played a bunch of things. Okay, let's say it's a 2-2. Let, let's just say the normal scenario is a 2-2. I, I even give you the benefit of a doubt, and it's a 3-2, right? It does three damage, whatever. Next turn you play, it's a 0-2. You start the round, it's a 0-2. You, you have to sacrifice something on, on, that, on the second turn you play it, otherwise it's a 0-2 forever. So you have to sacrifice something every single turn, otherwise it doesn't do anything. And the worst part, it even moves around. You, you can't even make sure that it's gonna stay in a lane that you can, you know, manipulate. Because if it was not moving around, you could say, okay, the moment I play it, I do 5 damage in a lane, kill the whole lane. Second turn, I don't care because it might stay at, two, at 0 life. And then third a turn, I play another 2-3 two, two, things and then it goes up to 2 or 3 damage again. And uh, and then I kill him, right? Because if you clear 2 lanes, then Leshy will take at least 1 turn to play something. And then the next turn, he will play something. So if it did not move around, you could manipulate it like that. But because it's moving around now, you you have to do a bunch of weird things. Like you, you have to... Use this lane, kill the whole lane, and then next turn this moves to the right, and then you use this and sacrifice it away so that you let room, but it will still attack this lane? Like, no, man. The, the card is really bad. It's extremely bad. It's extremely bad that you have to sacrifice. This is a win more card, and win more cards are not useful at all, right? Because... When will this be good? This will be good when you have infinite sacrifice. When you have a candidate or something, and you sacrifice again and again and again and again, again, and then you get, like, 20 damage on it. But that's it. That's the only time it's good at when you have an infinite and if you have an infinite you're winning already so it's useless ringworm i wanted to analyze this because some of the new cards have you know a bunch of people have different opinions ringworm is trash because flame is trash at this point 
no flame is not trash but flame is a lot more you a lot worse now you can only flame a unit twice on Casey's mod instead of four times there is a good chance that the ringworm will not even burn out so it's going to be either a 2-1 or a 0-5 which is also extremely bad and even if you kill the survivors once again you can only transfer two damage to the rest of your units so it's trash river order um is on good sigils haha <laughs> got you right it's obviously complete trash it goes underwater yeah what underwater means I, I i have said this like a million times but you have to understand underwater means that leshy has flying okay that's what underwater is underwater makes the opponent unit have flying that's why underwater and flying is bad for us but good for leshy okay because leshy does not need to kill your cards. Leshy does not need to control the board. Leshy just needs to beat you once. Leshy just wants to do 5 damage to you and win. So he can use flyers to... to um, How's it called? To pressure you, right? As long as Leshy is using flyers and you lose life, you have to be careful to not lose. While Leshy doesn't care, Leshy's like... If you have flyers and beat me, then so be it. Maybe next turn I beat you. So flyers on your side is not good because you try to not lose even once. While Leshy doesn't care. This thing makes Leshy flyer. And the thing is that Underwater is also good for Leshy for the same reason, right? Because Underwater makes Leshy have flyers. Make No, no, makes Leshy make your cards into flyers, right? So if Leshy has a Waterborne and you attack, then your unit is as if it's a flyer and Leshy kills your unit. And you don't want flyers, to be honest, because... If you don't kill opponent's units, you might lose the board. And if you lose your board, you're toast. Because if you lose your board, you cannot sacrifice units and you will have to try to draw scrolls and then from scrolls draw cards and you will lose so much time. So what is happening is that you want to kill the opponent board while you don't want to get hit on your real life, right? You don't also want to lose your um, life points. You might say, yes, but you said, Sif, that you want to keep your board alive while you kill Lash's board. Isn't that what Butterborn does? No. What Waterborn does is, on Leshy's turn, it is as if you don't have a board, and that is what kills you most of the time. If Leshy comes in with 8 damage, and all your units are Waterborn, you're gonna die. Sometimes you actually need to block and even let your units die to not lose. So Waterborn making, letting damage through is as if you don't have a board, which is extremely bad, right? And when you have flyers, then that means you cannot kill Leshy. And then you're losing your board without being able to keep it alive. So having flyers on your side and waterborns on your side is bad. While the same thing for Leshy is good. Uh, it's not a universal rule, right? Sometimes there are exceptions. If you have like 20 damage on a unit, you can have it in the waterborn, obviously. But still, a grizzly might come in and kill you. A white a shark might come in, a great white might come in and kill you. Because you have a river otter in the lane. So... Yeah, River Eyes is trash, and I just wanted to indicate, explain myself with Waterborne Flyers, because a lot of people feel like they're good cards. Like, I can put a Waterborne on my Mantis God, and then it is immortal. First of all, it's not immortal, because it can die from Porcupines. Okay, that's why, actually, mortality is better than Waterborne. And secondly, yeah, and what? You know what? If, if, if you put Waterborne on your Mantis God, first of all, might as well put Flying on it. And secondly, might as well put Immortality on it. Might as well put uh, Fancantity on it. Might as well put anything is better than Waterborne. <laughs> anything, man. Even Evolving is better than Waterborne. I prefer my Mantis God to become a 2-3 by Evolving than going underwater. And yeah. The rant is over. River Snapper is trash. Doesn't even do anything. 2 cost 1-6 is trash. Uh, Skink is obviously useful. Because the tail gets the flame buffs, the tail gets the sigil buffs, the tail gets everything. So this is a 1 cost 2 1 that creates a tail that might be spiky, that creates a tail that might be fecundity, might be immortal, might give us blood, might give us bones, anything, right? Whatever you put on the skink, the tails get it, gets a 2, even evolving everything. You put flame on the skink, you put 2 damage on the skink, it's a 3 2, while the flames, uh, the, the, the tails are, are a 0 2. By the way, uh, are a 2 2. Sorry that I'm mixing things up. So, the tail is a 0-2, right? So, when something attacks the skink, it moves to the right, leaves a 0-2 behind. Most of the time, it dies. A lot of times, it doesn't die. But as I said, if you put flame on the skink, like, imagine giving 4 life to the skink. The skink is going to be 1-6, the tail is going to be 0-6, okay? And you can sacrifice the tail. If, if uh, the tail has immortality, you can sacrifice the tail, and then it joins your hand, and then you can play it again for free, because the tail costs 0. If you put flame on the skink, 
uh, damage flame, and it's a 3-2, the tail is a 2-2. Two -two. If you put poisonous on it, the, the tail also has poisonous. If you put spikes, the tail spikes everything you put on the skink, the tail gets it too, and it's a very powerful. The skink is a very useful unit. Don't uh, sleep on the skink. By the way, Skink of Doom coined the uh, Sift content. Skunk. I thought this was trash. Okay. But I would say it's not complete trash. I, I'm not using the skunk a lot. But you have to realize something. First of all, I'm not using it because it has zero attack. Right? That's the reason. But it blocks in everything that has zero attack. Uh, one attack forever. Anything that has one attack, it gets blocked in forever. Is it flyers? Is it uh, units that are on board? It doesn't matter. Second thing. If something has two attack... It takes it three turns to kill it because it goes back to one. It it counts it completely matters gods. It count it does not die from three damage units like amalgam. It is good actually on the final fight with Leshy. It it counters the amalgam and the matters god. I mean it doesn't counter the amalgus, amalgam, but it completely counts the matters gods. So it is a good style unit, and the sigil itself is not actually that bad uh, because the same rules apply on everything. So if you for example you give the skunk, sorry, if you give the skunk to the mole man. Or the skink, but let's say the mole man, which makes more sense. Then the mole man will survive so much more. It, it will not die from poisonous. It will not die from anything. This also doesn't die from poisonous. It has some very niche scenarios that it is actually good. But the thing is that those very niche scenarios are a lot. Like I know it doesn't make sense. Niche scenarios and a lot of them do not make sense. Those those are like opposite things. But the thing is that it is good in these scenarios. How can I explain it? It is good against flyers. It is good against poisonous. It is good against uh, one damage units. But it's only good against those. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything, right? It counters half what Leshy does, but it doesn't do anything with that countering, right? It's as if it's like... Um, okay, I kill your unit, but my unit dies too. Actually, it just blocks in lanes, right? That's what it does. It blocks in a lane. And blocking lanes is good in this game because it buys you time to just focus on the other three lanes or the other two lanes, depending on how many you blocked in. That's why the Cuckoo is good too, right? Because it blocks in lane in. But the thing with the Cuckoo, why it's easy win and not it's complete trash, is because the Cuckoo blocks only Lesh's lane in, while the Skunk also blocks your lane in at the same time. But still, it's a, it's a decent unit, I have to say. Uh, it's not complete trash. You see, I also change opinions once in a while. Sparrow, ch 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 trash. It's a one cost flyer. That's a one damage. I mean, one damage flyers are trash. Okay, uh, let's just go on. But serve you said the cuckoo blocks in opponent lanes, guys. Stoat, trash. I mean, it's a one cost one two without the sigil. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Larva, I would say easy win. I mean, you might say useful, but I would say easy win. Now, why do I say easy win with strange larva, although it takes three turns? Well, because the larva might take three turns to evolve, but you are a human and you can play the game, right? So you can plan ahead, like just two turns ahead. You just have to plan two turns ahead. It's as simple as that. And then you win right away. You just play the strange larva, hope or pray that it doesn't die, or as people say, calculate the following two turns and just win. As simple as that. It evolves... First, it evolves into a 0-3 again. So, it has two evolutions. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, it evolves from a 0-3 to a 0-3. And then, after that, it evolves again into a 7-3 flyer. And at that point, you're winning right away, right? Because 7-3 flyer, most of the time, it will hit the backline and just kill... Uh, not, not the backline. Just gonna do 7 damage to Leshy and it's done. And if you flame it, like, once, it becomes so much more powerful. If you give it life flame, it's a 0-5, almost immortal. It will definitely have time to evolve. If it's a 1-3, like, if you flame it for damage, 1-3 or a 2-3, it, it won't, not only will it win you the game in two turns, but it will also buy you time for those two turns to arrive. So this thing is very powerful with any single buff you could give it. Like, if you give it flame, buff, or any, like, mantis, anything, immortality, anything you give it, it becomes so much more powerful. This is a very powerful card. Uh, by the way, flaming these cards... I mean, you know what? These cards are so bad that if you flame them, you are already making mistakes. Like, you could flame the Kingfisher for damage, but... Why? Don't you have any of these cards? I mean, if you don't have any of these cards, then yeah, obviously you can flame the Kingfisher. Might as well flame the Cat, man. Might as well flame the Mole. Are, are we kidding right now? If you don't have any of these cards to power up, obviously you can flame whatever. And uh, Tadpole. Uh, this is actually a useful, uh, not an easy win, a useful card. It's not an easy win because on its own, like on its complete own, it's it's trash, right? <laughs> it's not trash. It's it's this card goes underwater so it doesn't die, and then the next turn it uh, it evolves instantly into a bullfrog. 
So it's like a guaranteed bullfrog for free. Now the reason it's useful is because if you flame it or if you give it any buff that's useful, it becomes extremely powerful really quickly because it's a zero cost, right? So it's as if it is a gek. This this should be like next to a gek. So it is as if it's a gek with the difference being that instead of being a 1-1, one, one, it's a 0-1 on the first turn, but then it evolves into 1-2 with with, uh, with fly blocker, which is bad. But still, it evolves into 1-2. So, it's almost the same with the Gek. The difference, the big difference, is that if you flame this, or if you give it a good buff, like Mantis God plus Flame or something, you know, because it needs damage flame, otherwise it doesn't do anything really, then it becomes a lot better than the Gek. Because, imagine that. What is better? A 1-1 one, one with... Let's say I flame them both twice. This is a 3-1, this is a 2-1, right? What's better? A 3-1 that attacks three lanes and pretty much wins you instantly the game, or... A, a 2 1 that attacks three lanes pretty much wins you into the game and then goes underwater. And when it comes up again, it's a 3 2 that attacks all the lanes and uh, also blocks flyers. Eh, it's almost the same. It's almost the same. That's why it's next to each other. Uh, Turkey Vulture. I would say not complete trash. Uh, it's an 8 cost, which means you need to be able to somehow produce bones. I mean, if. if if you're at the 4th turn or the 5th turn and you have 8 bones because of all the sacrifice you did, then when the Vulture comes in, you should be winning the game at that point. Most of the time, if you barely survive to the 5th turn, then bringing in a 3-3 flyer will most likely win you the game. But sometimes it might not, so it's just not complete trash because it has a very good stat line. The ability, I don't care about it, but the stat line is insane. And if you flame it a bit, it's even better. If you have the Bone Lord, then it's really good. Like, imagine starting with a 3-3 Flyer all, all the time because you have 8 bones right away. So, it's not complete trash. Rayuli. Needs a specific deck. As simple as that. Definitely better than the Pelt Lice. Definitely better than that too. You, you guys can come in front here. Let's go like here. So, this is like an Uh Rayuli. Well, if you have a Sacrifice deck or uh, if you have... Uh, what is this called? If you have the sigil here, the this thing, the corpse maggot sigil, then it's good. As simple as that. Otherwise, it's trash. You can, you cannot play it. It's a four cost seven seven. What, what can I say? You either play it for free or with the black goat or with some kind of combo combo. Otherwise, it's trash. Nothing more to explain there. Warren, this is actually useful. Yes, it is. This is uh, pretty much like the black goat. But the difference is that you can split the sacrifice. What this does is the moment you play it, you get a rabbit in your hand. And a rabbit is like a 0-1. It's, it's as if it's a tadpole, but without abilities, right? So this thing, you play it. For example, turn one. You have this in hand and whatever else. Let's say this is your hand. And this is a squirrel. And this doesn't exist. Let's say this is your hand. Right? And this is a squirrel. You play the squirrel. You play the warren. The warren gives you a, a rabbit. You play the rabbit. And then you sacrifice the warren on the skink. For the skink, and you sacrifice the rabbit for the raven egg. And turn one, you have a skink and a raven egg. That's why this is good. This can propel your first turn very quickly into pretty much the second turn. And uh, it also combos with uh, two costs. Like, you can even do it with a wolf pup. Like, play the squirrel, play the warren, play the, uh, the rabbit, play the wolf pup. Turn one, wolf pup. Turn two, boom, instantly got a 2-5 with double attack. You see, that's the warren is really powerful. And any sigil you give it that has some kind of uh, re repercussion, like... Repercussion? What? Re re Repeat repetition. Any any sigil you give it that has a repetition, like field mice or um, cockroach, insta win. Like infinite bones, infinite uh, blood, infinite a bunch of things. You can get sacrifice out of it. It's it's a, it's a decent card. It's a very useful card. That's why it's unuseful. Wild ball, wild bull, wild bull. Hmm. I guess not complete trash. Yeah. As simple as that. And while we're at it, let's also bring the wolf over here. Uh, th those are just two cost three twos, right? The sigil is bad, so I would say this. The sigil makes it, when it moves around, it, the sigil actually does this thing. Okay? <laughs> as you see it, right? It literally, it moves around. I can't even do it, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> this is what it actually does. Um, when it moves around, it flings the previous card around, like... Maybe this is more of a graphic. Like, this is what it does. Every turn, it moves around and flings the other card back to the other lane. That's it, pretty much. I obviously hate moving around, but it is what it is. It's a 2 cost 3 2, so it, it, it's not complete trash, right? It has its stats, but it's bad. Wolf Cub. I mean, useful, obviously. Wolf Cub is a pretty decent card. 
It's it's a one cost one one instantly does damage and then it evolves into a wolf which is a three two so it's a one cost three two if you give it anything like if you give it double attack triple attack uh, flying sideways any anything you give it that has to do with being even more offensive it instantly becomes like easy win right the moment you give it something that's offensive you give it this it's op you give it this where is it you give it this it's op you give it eh, I mean offensive things right op 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 Anything, anything. Even flyer, making this flyer is very powerful. So, it's a good unit. Wolverine. Good sigils. I'm sorry. It has a good sigil. It's not insane. It's not even a good sigil, man. I, I would say... He's a specific deck. I mean, it's a... Okay, what this thing does is when it kills a unit, it gets its damage. But you have to realize that... Uh, so many things have to go right, right? I, I have a run on the channel which uh, actually went pretty well with the Wolverine. Not the Wolverine itself, the sigil of the Wolverine. But um, you have to realize that... First of all, it's a 1-3. If you flame it... Let's say you flame it, okay? And you make it a 3-3. Or, or let's say you transfer it onto a man's god. Because that's uh, the main uh, example people think about when uh, you think if it's a good card or not. Transfer it onto man's god. First of all, uh, first of all you should not think... <laughs> You should not always think, like, this is very good on Mantis God, and uh, on Mantis, and uh, on Direwolf, and uh, therefore it's good. No. <laughs> Guess what, guys? Mantis God, Mantis, and Direwolf, these sigils are already good on their own. They don't need Wolverine to be good at. So you should never, ever use very good cards to try to think if another good card is good. So let's begin with that. But let's say it's on the Mantis God. Um, then the Mantis God will attack three times, and if the Mantis God kills something, then it will become a 2-1. Okay, I mean, I could just flame it once, and it would be a 2-1 and would even give us a free win, right? So this is like a, a pseudo flame for damage every time you kill something. But the thing is that you have to kill something, and you also have to not die, right? Because the Mantis God might die, it might kill any, everything, but then something comes in and kills it. And then it's done, you lose the damage. As simple as that. So... There will be cases where this will be good. Like, Double Strike definitely works good with it. Mantis God definitely works good with it. But otherwise, it's not really that good. I mean, what do you? What will you do with the Sigil? This Sigil is useless on everything. <laughs> uh, good. Like, look at this. Useless. Good. Useless. 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 No, good. Useless. Good. Useless. 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 Useless, useless, useless. I mean, everything is useless, man. <laughs> everything. The sigil is really bad. It's not really that good. So, yeah. It's it's as if you flame a, da a unit, right? Uh, on damage. But only if it kills something. And for it to kill something, it has to line up correctly. And even if it kills something and gets the flame, still the black line might come and kill it. Right? So, I mean, think of, of it like that. Your skin has one damage. If you flame it once, and it was a 2-1, two, 2-2, two, two, it would kill the wolf cub. For example, if two wolf cubs are in front of it. Um, is that even a good example? I don't know. Let's say two gecks are in front of a skink. Skink is not a good example. Let's say the gek is... Yeah, let's say the gek is and two wolf cubs are coming in. You have the gek with the wolverine, and two wolf cubs are coming in. The gek kills something. The, f the first one, the first wolf pup, right? It, it becomes a 2-1. And then the second wolf pup comes in and kills the gek. The end. Now... Let's imagine the Gek has a normal flame and it's just a 2-1. It kills the first wolf pup, and because of the 2-1 damage, it also kills the back line. So both of them die. So it's a 2-1 that killed both, and it's still alive. So it's like a worse flame. It's it's a flame that only works if, if you're lucky and you're powerful. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, we, we hit the hour mark, obviously, because uh, that's a Sif channel uh, classic staple. Um, let's see if I would like to maybe re reorder some things. Mm, uh, is reordering even necessary? I'm not sure if reordering is even necessary. Most of the time I bring this like here. I would say this is like a smidge better than everything else. This stays here. This goes a bit higher. Um, this, uh, these, I mean, you know what? Reordering is not important, right? Like, it's just the small things. I... I don't need to reorder here. I, I explain myself. You can realize on your own <laughs> what I think is just a smidge better. I mean, the bat's definitely not up here. This might be a bit more higher. Uh, this will take so much time. If, if like, the way my mind works, this will take, like, an hour plus. So let's not reorder anything. Let's just... I, I did whatever reordering I did. Don't... Don't... 
only this reordering matters, okay? The rest, I haven't even thought about it. Forget it. As it is, it is as it is, right? And this thing. These two. These two matter. This and this is ordered correctly. The rest are not ordered correctly. It does not matter. So maybe these two are also ordered correctly. So yeah, that's going to be it. Um, I hope you guys um, agree or disagree. I would like to hear some opinions. First of all, if you like the content, drop a like, helps out the channel, and also will make it so you see more of my videos. And yeah, as I said, I uh, I'm expecting to read some comments here. I want to hear some opinions. I'm pretty uh, some hot takes. Maybe I am the person with the hot takes, and uh, I decided some things that you did not decide. Uh, this tier list is not similar. It's it's a bit similar. I'm pretty sure with the previous one I had. The previous one still stands. Maybe one or two cards I have a change of opinion on, but I'm not really sure. M most of the opinions I had on the previous tier list are the same. But the previous tier list was also without flaming and without flames and without without transferring sigils, without any of those things. This one is more of that. So, yeah. As I said, that's my tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed. Also, before I forget, let's... Um, yeah. Happy New Year. Very important. Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a fun time yesterday, night, on New Year's Eve, or maybe even today. I don't know what uh, over at your um, city slash uh, country you do when uh, New Year's Eve or New Year, the, the day of the New Year, if people do something, or I, I don't know. I definitely had a great time, and uh, I also hope you did too. And um, yeah, let's see what the New Year will bring us. Um, hopefully, everything is going to continue going better and better. Good luck and have fun with your life, guys. I don't know what to, what to say. What to say? Happy New Year. Anyway, that is going to be it for today. Once again, thanks for watching and see you guys around.